On March 12, 1622, Pope Gregory XV canonized a standout crew of five holy men and women. St. Francis Xavier. Teresa of Avila. St. Philip Neri. St. Isidore the Farmer. St. Ignatius of Loyola. After 400 years, we're taking a look at their legacies through the eyes of contemporary Catholics who have benefited from their intercession and example. I first came to know St. Philip Neri through watching the film, I Prefer Heaven, which depicts his life and is an apt description of how he lived it. Living for heaven, forsaking all else. One way he tried to do that was by being a missionary in India with the Jesuits. But St. Ignatius of Loyola told him rather to become an apostle to the church in Rome, serving the poor and the youth especially. And he was so successful in this that he became known as the second apostle of Rome after St. Peter. People loved him so much they built a beautiful huge church called Chiesa Nuova, the new church. It's still called this 400, 500 years later. And when I was a student in Rome, I would go every Saturday to pray at this church, at his relics, and to attend Mass. So I developed a great spiritual closeness to St. Philip Neri. And I learned a, a lot from him. And it's, not the least of which through several traditions he started, one of which is this seven church walk. You may have heard of this as seven churches, visiting seven churches on Holy Thursday. One year I had the privilege of going on this seven church walk. It takes all day to go all around Rome and visit these churches, um, but it's something that is joyful and you do it with a large group of people. And I think that's what St. Philip Neri has to teach all of us about our faith, that it's something joyful it keeps us young. Despite being an older man, he was very successful in serving the youth and the poor because of his great joy that came from his faith. He founded the Oratory, a place for Christians to pray and to come together and to be together. And so for ourselves as well, may we learn from St. Philip Neri to be joyful in our faith, to share in it together, and to live for heaven. So I first met Teresa of Avila about a year before I entered diocesan seminary. But it was really my first year in seminary that I fell in love with St. Teresa. Not only because she taught me to pray, and showed me that there was a, a much deeper reality to prayer than I had before been aware of, but also because she helped me fall in love with God. Uh, I was really attracted to her love of God, to her, her love of Jesus Christ and His love for her, which really opened up my eyes to what God Himself was calling me to, the, the level of intimacy. And so I stayed close to Teresa and to the other Carmelite saints um, throughout my time in seminary. And it was actually through St. Teresa that God called me to the Carmelite order. It was my last year in seminary. I was studying theology in Rome, reading a biography on Teresa by Marcel Auclair. And it was in the moment when Teresa called St. John of the Cross, she asked him to, to join her reform, that I felt uh, God calling me to participate in the same work as, as Teresa and John. That's actually why I took the name uh, Brother John Teresa. And so yes, uh, Teresa continues to be a very important presence in my life, a teacher in prayer, and a great example, and I hope to be as great a lover of God as she is. So St. Isidore the Farmer came into my life when I was in college. I had picked St. Elizabeth Ann Seton as my patron saint when I was in high school, but then I started to grow closer to my faith when I was in college and always felt like it had been a random choice, my patron saint. So I felt this call to find and discover other saints who I connected more with. And my mom suggested St. Isidore the Farmer because I had this passion for growing food and working with the land. Um, and I discovered that I had a strong connection with St. Isidore, first of all because of his uh, work in agriculture and farming, and also because he's a hard worker and I identified as a hard worker. Then I pursued farming after college and I worked at, on small farms for about eight years, but suddenly felt called to become a teacher. And 
I felt like this was almost a betrayal of St. Isidore, who had been my stand-in patron saint for several years now, because I was going to pursue a different path other than farming. And one day I was looking for teaching jobs and I noticed Lumen Verum Academy, where I now work, listed under their job description that the students would stop to pray the Angelus every day at noon, regardless of what was going on at school. And I knew that St. Isidore was chastised for stopping to pray the Angelus every day at noon while he was working. And others looked down on him for doing this because they thought he was working less hard than others. So when I saw that in the job description, I just knew that it was St. Isidore speaking to me. And now, every day when I pray the Angelus with my students, I think of St. Isidore. St. John's Prep is a school that is sponsored by the Zavarian Brothers. And the founder of the Zavarian Brothers, Theodore Reichen, was inspired by the zeal and faith of St. Francis Xavier and chose him to be the patron of the Brothers and today the patron of St. John's Prep. As a school, we carry on the legacy of 500 years of St. Francis Xavier by focusing on his vocation of servant leadership. We are inspired by Francis Xavier's openness to conversion. He met Ignatius of Loyola at the University of Paris, and at first he wasn't really interested in what Ignatius was teaching. But over time, he had an experience of conversion and opened his heart to what Ignatius was teaching and eventually became one of the first Jesuits. As a missioner, Xavier modeled encountering other cultures. He wasn't just there to tell others how God could be a part of their lives. He was there to see how God was present in other cultures and mix and match what was happening in his world with the cultures that he encountered. Xavier's passion, his willingness to respond to Ignatius's challenge to Ite and Flamite Omnia, go and set the world on fire, is inspiring and something that we aim to do each day in our classes and on our campus at St. John's Prep. It's an honor for us to continue the legacy of St. Francis Xavier and build on the way that he has been the patron of the Zavarian Brothers. I so wanted to set the world on fire when I graduated college that I wanted to enter the Society of Jesus, the Jesuits. And I went on retreat and discerned using all sorts of Ignatian principles my future. And then I went to tell my mother that I wanted to be a Jesuit. And she was familiar because of the album by the St. Louis Jesuits, Earth and Vessels, that had a song, Take and Receive, which is St. Ignatius's prayer. She really wanted me to be a diocesan priest so I'd be closer to home. So she said to me, you know, why do you want to be a Jesuit? And I said, well, I want to follow the way of St. Ignatius and be a missionary. And she said, well, I don't know if I like that, St. Ignatius. That prayer of his, take and receive, that's very hard. And you know, she was right. We can only live Ignatius' prayer through grace, praying continually for the grace for God to take and receive all my liberty, my memory, my understanding, my entire will. All I have and possess, you have given all to me, to you I return it. Dispose of it according to your will. Only your love and your grace, that's enough for me. Congratulations to all the saints celebrating the anniversary of their canonization, especially St. Philip Neri. Happy 400th anniversary, St. Isidore. Pray for us. Happy 400th anniversary, St. Ignatius. St. Francis Xavier, we ask you to be with us in all that we are and all that we do on our campus each day. We're here to honor the 400th anniversary of the canonization of St. Teresa. So St. Teresa, we thank you for all you did for the church and all you continue to do for the church in heaven. And we ask you to pray for us and accompany us on our way.